Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot. So today we're gonna to deep dive LSAS stinkering. And as I say that, it probably deserves some explanation, um, kind of like Kerberos sting or Swibbly do, uh, the name itself might not be obvious. So if you're already familiar with the technique, feel free to hop ahead. Otherwise, let's break that down for some folks. So what is LSAS? Probably should start there. That is the Local Security Authority Subsystem Service. Uh, basically, that is a Windows process that runs on every uh, version of Windows, and that's what's going to store credentials. Um, in older versions, that was clear text passwords. Uh, in newer versions, that's going to be hashed passwords or tokens, and that's going to have a lot of juicy data for an attacker, um, which is why it's particularly interesting. Uh, it has its own you know, little section or sub-technique in the MITRE attack matrix, uh, T1003.001, um, dumping LSAS memory. And again, having valid credentials makes it very easy for an attacker to move around to other systems and gain additional access uh, without having to drop exploits or zero days or other things. So we know what LSAS is. What is stinkering? So this is probably a credit to the researchers who named the technique. Um, stinkering is a Hebrew word and it means snitch. So what they're really doing is they are snitching on LSAS. So breaking this down, this is just another way to uh, get that credential material out of LSAS. Um, this technique in particular is using Windows error reporting. So this is a built-in Windows uh, functionality. Usually it's there to generate crash dumps. So if um, you have a process and you know it you know doesn't blue screen, but it crashes, or even if it does blue screen, um, it's going to use uh, that Windows error reporting, the WER fault and WER manager services to uh, perform a crash dump, try and take some of that memory so that the developers can debug that and see what exactly went wrong. So using that built-in utility is very important for this technique and a lot of that is because we want to bypass again as an attacker bypass traditional defenses uh, using a built-in signed windows binary um, living off the land is going to evade a lot of edr and other endpoint detections so that's really why we needed yet another way of dumping lsas so i'm going to highlight a couple of their slides again why are we doing this again it allows us to gain additional access to other messages other systems to be able to move laterally. A lot of criminal organizations, ransomware groups are going to need domain administrators so they can deploy their ransomware widely. And dumping credentials, dumping LSAS is part of that um, you know, typical kill chain. Uh, you can see that that's very prevalent in the wild. Um, even looking across some of these you know, various threat actors and criminal organizations and their groups, um, they all use this technique. So having detections, having hunt queries for those in your arsenal is very important. Um, I will let you guys take a look at this. So this is the slides that were presented at DEF CON 30 earlier this year. It is a great resource. Um, the authors did release a proof of concept for LSAS, LSAS stinkering. Um, so you can see that here. And this is what we ran in Snap Attack. So very simple here. We have a Windows 10 machine running. Um, we have ready to dump LSAS. We have to be administrator. Um, but we can see what other things we have um, credential wise. So there is still value in doing this even if you are a local administrator. So very simple, um, we can just run this binary. It's going to dump and use uh, WER fault to dump the LSAS process to disk here. And we can see that LSAS EXE crash dump here. Um, lots of detection opportunities for this, which we will dig into. Um, do want to say that this is not the only tool that you can use for LSAS um, stinkering. So one in particular, Help Systems, uh, the guys that maintain Cobalt Strike, they have a tool called NanoDump. Um, this is kind of like the Swiss Army knife of LSAS dumping, as they would say. And I mean, if I go into examples and features, they have uh, lots of different ways to do that, including uh, stinkering with that flag. Um, you can see the different options, different ways that these techniques work. Um, so definitely worth checking out. Uh, we do have another captured threat in our library here using this technique. And one thing that we did differently here in this version uh, versus the others is um, performing a prerequisite check, which we'll talk about. Um, LSAS, uh, really, uh, WER reporting by default is going to do a mini dump, which is not going to have all of the credential material in there. So changing the dump type to full, which is uh, number two, 
that is going to allow us to have the best chance of having that credential in memory. Um, so that's really one of the prerequisites here. Um, this is again going to use a same technique, just a little different tool here to uh, actually run that crash dump and gather that. So both of these work. Um, again, lots of detection opportunities here. So let's pivot over and let's talk about how would I detect, how would I hunt for LSASH tinkering in my network? So the original research in the PowerPoint does go through some. I'm going to talk through these here, but um, one of the things that is in common with this is a registry key modification as a prerequisite. So as I just mentioned, by default, this dump type is going to be set to one for a mini dump, and that's often not going to have all the information that you want in there. So every attacker is going to change this to a full dump. So really what you would want to be doing is monitoring this registry key. So H key local machine, software, blah, blah, blah. Over here to the Windows report, error reporting, local dumps, dump type. And again, if you have the ability to set that, you would want to see that being set to a two for a full dump. Um, this alone would not necessarily be a smoking gun. Uh, it is a prerequisite to it. I guess you could say a false positive could be an administrator or developer who is, um, again, actually trying to debug and use uh, the Windows Air Reporting Services, and they want the full debug, um, full debug dump. So that could be an option. But um, if you see this followed by some other detections here, that is definitely highly evident of LSAS tinkering. So a couple other ways that we can look at this is going to be um, file creation logs. Um, so if your EDR or system has that ability, you'll be able to see that. Uh, this detection here is looking for the actual memory dump. Um, so that is going to be stored in a very specific folder. Um, that's this local app data crash dumps, which is again is going to be um, C Windows System 32 you know, et cetera, to this crash dumps. And then we're going to see LSAS or LSAS.exe with the process ID. So this PID was 668, and then it's going to end in dump. So looking for the creation of this file is going to be evidence here. You can see that this is detecting both that LSAS tinkering with the original POC as well as nano dump. And you can also see that there's a little bit of fragility here. So that um, process ID is going to change and randomize every time. So you're not going to be able to necessarily rely on that um, alone. But again, this as it is, is a very high confidence detection that I could deploy to one of many tools. Uh, another way that we can look at this is the application crash reports. So the Windows Air Reporting Service is also going to have some additional logs. Um, they store this in their report queue app crash folder, and it's going to be created um, with that process name in here. So we can see that file created. We can see the report that WER, again, this is WER fault. Um, again, some additional files in here. Um, we can see this is also working for the nano dump method. So Again, because the Windows Air Reporting Service is actually doing the work here, this is going to be created on disk, and this is just another artifact left behind. Um, unlike the memory dump file that we just looked at, this isn't going to have that data. This is more additional debug data, but really it's that, it's that dump file that the attacker is going to be using here for uh, actually gathering the credentials. So those detections all available to subscribers. Um, there are community detections, you know, through Sigma that are here. So you can see WER fault um, touching LSAS process memory. So this is a community detection, again, looking for WER fault, uh, specifically touching LSAS. Um, so we can see examples there. Um, we can also see uh, this one here is, again, another cross process or process access event um, with a specific access flag. Um, so that does work for LSAS tinkering too. So definitely different options um, and different ways of detecting this, but uh, you would want to have this in your arsenal because uh, again, this is we've been seeing an uptick and rise in this technique because it does evade a lot of um, EDRs and a lot of built-in native detections because this is a signed Windows binary. It, it is a living off a of LAN technique. It does have legitimate uses. So um, this technique has definitely been on the rise, whereas some of the other um, tried and true ways of dumping LSAS are definitely more widely caught and detected. Uh, last thing that I do want to plug is Cybersecurity Cares. So this is a uh, charity fundraising that we're doing in partnership with some other cybersecurity organizations um, organized by our friends at Lima Charlie, but lots of others that are participating here. So you can see a bunch of the names. 
Um, the charity that we are supporting this year is Action Against Hunger. And again, they are fighting global food insecurity. So uh, definitely urge you to make a donation. Um, you can do that here. We actually already hit the first goal of $10,000 and it's been raised to 15. So any help and support that you can give would be appreciated this time of year. So anyways, that's our snapshot for today. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.